Okay, so uh, just repeat this stuff again. For uh, class full and classless routing, uh, you know, class full fixed link subnet masks. It's going to use the um, you know the standard class A, class B, and class C subnet masks. Routing updates do not contain subnet masks, and therefore the route adheres to their class full boundaries. Um, and a, a routing protocol can also be classless uh, and use VLSM variable variable link subnet masks. Uh, routing up updates do contain the subnet mask, so the routing protocol is not limited to only advertising class full networks. In other words, smaller subnets can be used to break up a network more efficiently. So um, a lot of times on like the older, like RIP, RIP version 1 is um, completely limited to class full subnet masks. RIP version 2 is inherently class full, but you can uh, put in a command that will make it classless as well so that you can, um, you know, you have the option of both. And then uh, route summarization. Uh, you can also minimize groups of contiguous subnets into what are called supernets um, to keep the size of the routing table to a minimum. So in the example below, let's say you've got um, you know a bunch of class C subnet masks, uh, 192.168.16.0 through 192.168.31.0, all slash 24s. You could summarize these as 192.168.16.0 slash 20 um, you know, with that subnet mask, 255.255.240.0, so that instead of having, you know, an individual, um, you know, dot sixteen, dot seventeen, dot eighteen, all the way through dot thirty one, um, in the routing table, you'll just have a single, um, a single uh, routing entry. This only works when they're they're contiguous, though. So, like, if you didn't, if you had, if all of these are going to the same location, that's fine. But if say one nine two dot one six eight dot thirty dot zero slash 24 was going to another uh, destination you wouldn't be able to summarize it like that you'd be able you would still be able to create a supernet with part of it um, but you you'd still have to segment uh, some of that stuff out so keep that in mind for route summarization and supernetting and then also for um, for dynamic routing protocols you can have uh, what's called interior and exterior gateway routing protocols um, and it basically corresponds to you know how much of the network you control so routing protocols um, that you completely control the network are going to be interior so if it's it's all your private land you know all, all the stuff that you're handling completely you can use an interior routing protocol if it's exterior like you're going to have to you know you're say you're an ISP and you're going to have to um, communicate with Verizon and um, AT&T and advertise like different routes for public addresses to them you're gonna have to use an exterior routing protocol and for uh, the internet primarily we use BGP specifically e, e exterior BGP uh, to to uh, advertise the routes between different networks um, okay so those are those are all the kind of different specifications for routing protocols then you also have these subtypes of routing protocols um, which uh, these basically determine like how a, a routing protocol works and determines like which path is best. So distance vector routing protocols, uh, link state routing protocols, and then advanced distance vector or hybrid routing protocols. And we'll, um, as we get into these next couple chapters, we'll go more in depth on, on some of these, but like a distance vector routing protocol would be like RIP and uh, version one and versions two, whereas a link state routing protocol is gonna be like OSPF. Um, and then uh, routing redistribution. Um, some networks use multiple routing protocols and have to redistribute routes between the two protocols. Um, so for instance, on, on our network, we've got situations where you've got RIP going on for individual sites to advertise routes to the main network. Then you also have OSPF for um, you know different parts of the network. And then you also have internal BG, IBGP, internal BGP, like exchanging most of the routing information. So RIP would be fed into uh, BGP to so that you've got one uh, unit for distributing that throughout the rest of the network. So one-way redistribution, like say this example here, you've got OSPF and EIG, EIGRP both running on the network um, you know, diff for different parts of the network. One, it's one way and two way sound exactly like they sound. If you were feeding EIGRP just into OSPF, that'd be one way. If you were feeding OSPF into EIGRP and vice versa, that'd be two way redistribution. And 
that is everything for chapter 10. Any questions on that before we actually move into like rip and